I think we're good. We're at the hour here and yes. happy to jump in and get this going. I know you've got a lot that you want to share with us. So um, the first thing I want to do is just sort of introduce, my name is Micah Peterson. I work at Procedure Flow and so we're just hosting for you today. But the setup for this and, and a little bit of an intro for you is that uh, we, as we entered into the COVID season, we had some, uh, A, some free time because trade shows and things that we would normally yes. be doing are, have completely disappeared. So that was the first thing. And then the second thing is we realized people are facing a pretty big challenge where they had to take what they had figured out in the classroom and mm -hmm. they've got to make that perhaps work remotely. Uh, how do you do classrooms remotely? We know it's different. We know it's harder and it's going to take a lot more energy and creativity. And so when I started going through a list of people that I knew that would be really good and shine on this topic, uh, I immediately called you because we had met at ICMI and mm -hmm. you spoke about accelerated learning methodology yep. and, uh, and we had some great conversations and so I was like oh she knows a ton about training so I just called you up and interview and you were very gracious to to do this webinar and so uh, in leading up to this we were just so excited because you have such a wealth of knowledge this is your really your whole life's work has mm -hmm. been your you have a master's in uh, training and development uh, I think before that even like in 1999 up till now you've been involved in training in some mm -hmm. sense and now you are a trainer of trainers and uh and so with all of that wealth of education and i think my favorite part about you and talking to you which what comes through very richly is that you uh you're in the trenches so you're not just an idea person you're not like no. a, a guru about customer experience that is just you know spending all day on the road talking at conferences you do it every day and mm -hmm. you're trainers and you're figuring this out so that that for me is the most exciting part about hosting uh, you here today. So I, hopefully that functions as an intro in terms of Thank you. Uh, a little bit about you. And uh, we're just so happy to have you here. So um, in that sense, um, the first thing that I wanted to sort of ask you was, um, you know, uh, you had, we have a poll, I think that we're going to run here in a second. But just before we do that, could you just tell us a little bit about why you love training? So like what got you into it and why, why go into this field? Um, what, what's your passion for this? So um, thank you for that question because it's one of my favorite stories. Um, I was working for Goodwill Industries um, as a skills trainer. So assisting folks with um, intellectual challenges in their work. Okay. Um, and discovered that they actually were facilitating what, a job club for ex-felons. And I thought, well, that sounds really interesting. I have some criminal justice degree, or not a degree, but some classes I'd taken. So I felt I was qualified. <laughs> that's when you're really young, that's easy to do, right? I, don't, I can take on the world. <laughs> so I asked um, if I could uh, assist in that, in that process. And what was hilarious is they said I could go and be a warm body. And mind you, I was very small back then, uh, very, still very short, five foot three, but you know, much smaller. And so I wasn't sure what they meant by that, but um, I took the opportunity, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. take whatever opportunities handed you. And I quickly discovered that the process they were using was really command and control. And these folks had a lot on the line. So they had just been released from incarceration. They had 30 days to find employment or go back. Yeah. Right? So there was, there was a lot on the line for these individuals. And they weren't listening to the facilitator's side conversations. Disrespect. They just didn't care. Whoa. Nor did the facilitator. No. And so I went home and I took a Mark, Mark Victor Hansen, Jack Canfield, yes, a video into a real VCR okay. um, and put it in there and um, created a worksheet based on a piece of their work um, about connecting to your value. Okay. And that as being part of the human race, it's important that you give your gift back. I went back, okay. asked permission to facilitate, was allowed to do that. You and we, over the next six months, you start, I started seeing light bulbs come on. Mm -hmm. I started people seeing people make changes in their lives. Now, I'd love to say that I was magical and I did that. I didn't. I facilitated that, though. Mm -hmm. I took information I knew and helped them see the value, not only in themselves, but in that new information. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, Micah. I had no words for it. But I knew then that that's what I would be doing forever. Okay. Um, and so worked my way through through master's program 
and then um, recently over the last six years just fell in love with customer experience um, it, it is so powerful to have a positive experience and a negative experience right I mean That's both it. of those are so impactful so I'm yeah. in the perfect perfect place in my career interesting uh yeah. that's really i that's a really like a touching story first of all and uh, uh i love that stuff so it's cool to hear you say that and you've talked about in the past when you and i have talked about how to, to maybe not think about ourselves as instructors per se mm -hmm. but more like facilitators yes uh, and that is there's a lot you could open up there and it's very interesting but um just before we we sort of dive in and get to the, the heart of what you want to share today um, what do you want to start out with that first poll? Yes. So um, our opening poll is, um, uh, or is it ready? How are you feeling today? I, I right. It. So, so for everybody to now be able to answer that question. So we've got a, a, some results starting to come in here now. So I, I don't want to, last time I think I, I did this, I spoiled it. Like I started saying who was winning. So I'm, I'm not going to spoil it this time. <laughs> Give everybody a few seconds. But why don't you share a little bit as you're as people are answering this question, um, what's the tie-in here for what you wanted to do? So it's important, right, that we're measuring how people are feeling about um, their experience. So we, as we move through this, we'll talk about uh, some tools that you can use to evaluate uh, how folks are feeling uh, when they enter a room and how they're feeling throughout that training experience. Um, Jeannie Walters, um, I, I'm a huge fan girl of Jeannie Walters, uh, talked to us about Soon we will have, you know, machine learning and different things that will allow us an insight to how people are feeling. But until yeah. then, we need to use old fashioned tools to figure it out, right? Um, well, like my Apple Watch might tell my boss <laughs> what my heart rate's <laughs> doing, therefore I could be stressed out or something. Yeah, so that sounds so scary when you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, right, there, there are going to be all sorts of tools that we could choose to use to monitor how somebody is feeling and, and you know, heart rate and things like that are, are a great tool to identify that. Yeah. Even for us, right, sometimes I'll look at my Apple Watch and I'm like, I had no idea I was so stressed out, but my resting heart rate's 85, I should do something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason is because if we're not feeling so good and we're, you know, for whatever reason, um, it is really easy for a trainer to activate what we call the uh, the part of the amygdala, which is the fight, flight, or freeze, right? Okay. And so the hard work of bringing somebody back from that is energy we should really be using to facilitate the learning experience. So if I'm already stressed out and I'm coming into, luckily we have 52% who feel so great they should wear shades, right? Yeah, um, exactly. And you all, yeah, and you also see that the way um, in which I structured those questions was kind of fun, right? So you don't, uh, asking questions on a scale of one to 10 about how somebody feels can be really intimidating, right? So thinking through the language choice you're using, so people are like, oh, huh, well, this is kind of fun. Maybe yeah. Sherry will be kind of fun, right? Right. So being intentional about the language choice. But then, so I know that 52% of people are ready to learn, are excited to be here. Um, and then I need to think about how can I care for the others that might not be feeling so great, right? right. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's tied to me or something that's happening outside of here or with the workplace, still my job to care for that. Yeah, that's really interesting and meta. I like what you've done here in terms of this is something that everyone could use uh, in, in setting up to understand how people are feeling and then sort of make adjustments based on that. And so, um, I'm going to close the poll results down here, but hopefully everybody had a chance to look at them. And it seems about half of us are having a great day. And then um, maybe the rest of us are just doing okay. So, uh, <laughs> Which in this current climate is pretty darn good in my opinion, right? So, yeah. Um, so that uh, maybe the first question that I might ask you in getting into this is um, what got you into this topic? Um, what you know, you're doing your train the trainer stuff, you're in the weeds day to day helping Wayfair mm -hmm. set up with uh, their programs. Um, so what got you turned on to happiness as a as a key for doing training? That's a great question. So um, I've been in this a long time. And um, 
a lot of bad training <laughs> got me interested. Like, what is not working? Um, you know, and then a lot of people, um, you know, experts out there that spend a lot of time really figuring out how the brain works, right? For me, it was a duh moment. It's like, why haven't we been looking at the brain and how it functions this whole time and design and build our programs in a way that that makes sense, right? right. Instead of, we, you know, programs are being designed um, with a command and control, like you will do this or else um, there's going to be a big quiz at the end. We might fire you if you don't pass. I mean, you know, like, ugh, yuck. Um, right. And then people are wondering why, you know, uh, one, they're not t training and development isn't taken seriously. You don't have a spot in the C-suite. That's only been, you know, like the last 15, 20 years that we've actually been taken seriously. Right. And that you see, you know, chief um, learning officers now. Right. There's a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Um, so I just started thinking about it, right, and started reading and, and you know, looking for, um in one of the, I love to research, so I can get lost. <laughs> like I can rabbit hole, like you wouldn't believe in journals, um, yeah. which I know is a gift because it can it can feel quite daunting to others. And I started recognizing uh, the the power of designing for how we learn, right? And then and also the power in how our emotions are tied to learning, directly tied. Yeah. Um, in my, if I'm in fight, flight, or freeze my brain is structured not to bring in new information. I mean, that comes back from when we were need when we were out hunting and gathering and needed to be able to determine very quickly if you were safe and then react. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I was going to come back to that and say, like, explain that a little bit. So like, um, I, let's go back to some sort of pre caveman state and yeah. I get out there and I face to face with a tiger or something. So that, what is going on there? And then how do we translate that through into a training model? So what, what's good and what's bad? And, and um, mm -hmm. how do we deal with sort of our, the, um, you know, the monkey part of our brain that is just instinctive? Right. It's funny. I call it the lizard, but it's the same, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. So what's occurring is I want to survive, right? And so um, a number of things are happening. Some people tend to freeze. They just, they just stop everything stops. Uh, some people fight. That's usually my, um, my go-to, uh, which uh, I have to tone down, right? <laughs> Not everyone wants to hear all of that. And then, or I'm getting out of there, right? And uh, how do I get out of here? And how do I get out of here quickly? Okay. So it may, you know, it makes sense back when we are hunter gatherers. It makes sense when you're walking to your car at 11 o'clock at night and you see a stranger, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to stop and say, oh, and, and uh, what are you doing out here? And are you yeah. safe? And what is your name? And tell me your story. You know, you need to, you need to make sure that you're going to survive. Yeah. If all of my resources on, are on that process, then my brain, and my brain is wired not to bring anything else in, right? I, there is no room for that. It's about yeah. survival. Yeah. And so, you know, um, one of the things I require of any team that I'm, I'm leading is that we are there very early, right? Not only to prep that room, but to make sure all of those things are taken care of. So we're right at that front door, you know, doing the hand hug is why I call it. Now we can't do that in COVID-19 and that's going to look yeah, different like, when we go back. As you're, maybe as you're sharing this, if we break it out into two buckets, like what mm -hmm. you used to do in a classroom and then maybe transfer over to what, what does that look like now? But I would love to, for you to just start with, you know, just the basics of a classroom setup and um, okay. how do you change it from a freeze fight, you know, to something more inviting? Can you just take us through that a little bit? Certainly. So 20 years ago and even today sometimes, right, you would walk into a training room, you have rows of chairs, um, it, you know, usually some bright, obnoxious lighting, you know, all of those fluorescent lights that we always have or had, um, you know, perhaps the instructor or facilitators not even greeting anyone at the door, they have their back to everyone writing the agenda or um, taking care of some loose ends. Um, perhaps their introduction, and believe me, I've seen this. Uh, my name is Sherry. Don't worry, I'm not going to remember any of your names because, well, that's just too difficult for me. Uh, this is what we will be doing. These are the times we will be doing that. Uh, please note that you need to be back on time for break. One minute tardy, and we will have to have a discussion. Um, 
we will be here from eight to five. Um, you're going to learn all of this content. And then there's going to be a, an exam at the end um, in which you must pass by 85% or we're gonna have to talk to talent management about your position with us. Are you ready and interested to learn? Uh, no. No, I, I mean, and it sounds like every university class pretty much. Though. I know, <laughs> it does. Um, and it, I've you know, taught and there I, as well. I, yeah. I slept through about half of my classes. So, <laughs> put it that so way. what if you entered a room, right? So you come into the room, the lighting is warm, the, the colors on the walls are, are warm and welcoming. Perhaps there are some relevant inspirational quotes yeah. or even challenging questions to get ignite your curiosity. Before you enter that nice space, you've been, there's a facilitator at the front door, you know, um, uh, shaking your hand or elbow bumping, whatever we're going to do when we return back to site and asking your name, um, you really spending a couple of seconds, you know, not too many because we have a lot of people coming in, but really setting that stage that I'm here, I'm committed to this experience, I can't wait to learn with you. Right. And then when everyone comes in, the facilitators at the front of the room, the the agenda is already up there. No need to run through it. Nobody's really interested. But if they want to, they can read it. No need to bore everyone with bathroom breaks and where the bathrooms are. You know, they can all figure that out later. Right now, those first 15, 30 minutes right. should be something interesting. Right. right. So I often start with a. Um, a relative a medium question so it's not easy because easy is like oh gosh this is gonna bore me not so challenging anyone's gonna cry yeah. but an interesting situation that they might come into um, into contact with in their role pair them up two, three people have them collaborate on that and put and solve that problem right okay. can you give me like an example maybe Certainly. So um, for a drop shipping company, uh, perhaps it is an individual's package arrived damaged mm -hmm. and they have contacted customer service. They're really upset. Um, they've been waiting for this package for weeks um, and it, it is arrived and it's broken. How do you um, how do you hear that customer? How do you assure that customer that we're going to solve that problem? And then Imagine you have a magic wand. What solution would you provide that customer? Okay. So this isn't about right or wrong, right? This is about assessing their ability to connect with customers, assessing critical thinking, yep. right? Creating, uh, creating that teamwork environment, assessing their ability to collaborate. It hasn't even been one hour yet. Nobody knows I'm assessing these things, right? All this information is going to be useful to me as I move through. Yep. Um, but that's what I'm doing and, and what's happening for them is their oxytocin is being activated, their serotonin is being activated as they're feeling successful, the mood lighting is helping GABA be activated so anxiety is reducing and now they're excited. Right, so I, I love that. I love, you're putting the science you know, to uh, an experience that we're all very familiar with which is kind of like what if you invited somebody over for dinner you know, to your house or you know, for an evening tea and yeah. treats, and it's like there there can be two really opposite experiences, and maybe we're not thinking a lot enough about that um, that setup and what is you know our first impression in the first twenty minutes. So that's mm -hmm. um, I it, that that challenges me a lot to think about um, whether it's a training class or a new hire or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, are we are we providing that experience? So. So you, you, somebody's going to shut down or somebody's going to open up. Right. Um, and then when that happens, so if we, if we set the, the table correctly, um, what then, what does that mean? Is, is a happier agent any more or less productive than somebody who's <laughs> sort of like whatever? Yes. So they are actually, uh, yeah. they are. Um, and there are, I, I asked myself that question as well, preparing for this webinar. I wanted to dig into that a little bit more. And there are a number of studies out there about positive affect and the, how that is required for creative thinking um, and also critical thinking and innovation, right? So an unhappy person um, 
is not somebody that is going to think outside of the box, uh, is going to go to that extra mile, um, or even maybe around very long. And we all know how expensive it is sure. to to bring somebody back or to rehire for that position, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting that you contacted me about this at the same time I'm taking this fabulous course um, through Coursera called Creativity um, and Innovation. It's part of their design thinking process or yep. specialization. And at first I thought, what is this? How does this have anything? I, I, but I was interested because the, the facilitator is phenomenal. Yep. Um, and Who's she spent an entire, what was that? Who was the facilitator? Uh, her name is French, and I can't sp oh. I can't say it very well, but I'm oh. telling you, she's incredible. Um, and she had all of the research, which, which is what gets me, right? As soon as you start talking to me about research, uh, you've got my attention, because I believe you. Yeah. Um, and she started showing us how a positive affect is required for creativity, that this whole idea you have to be a tortured soul to be creative is actually nonsense. Mm. And her example was Virginia, one of her examples was Virginia Woolf, who produced her best work when she was feeling well. Mm. So yes, she, she had some significant challenges, right? But it was when she was feeling good that we got, we got the, reap the rewards of her creativity. Okay. So, um, so yes, it is very, it is, you must, we must care for that in order yeah. for the, in order for our customers to get the most, um, not the most, but the best customer experience. And how does that link then? So if I'm, if you set the table well and I'm happy, I'm engaged now. So you're saying I'm going to have, my brain's going to be empowered if I'm feeling good to be more mm -hmm. creative. Um, what does, how does creativity, like I've got, systems to learn i've got procedures to learn you know this is our world right like so i've got all this stuff that i've got to learn how to do in different scenarios and exceptions and you know like I, i'm stressed out about that so where does creativity come into play then uh now that i'm happier what what, what am i going to be able to do better you're going to be able to solve problems in ways that might be more efficiently, might be more efficient, right? Um, you're going to think through situations. Um, you're going to challenge content that maybe, um, maybe you have a better way um, to de-escalate a customer. Maybe you have experienced a more efficient way to contact, um, you know, UPS or FedEx. I'm giving you relatively simple examples here, but. Uh, to learn this this way, right? Um, but learning is not linear, and it's especially not linear for adults. It's like this, right? It, I'm connecting new knowledge to old knowledge, um, and so uh, creativity is not just this idea that I want to create something new, right? I'm going to spend my time in, in training trying to devise a better mousetrap. Right. Creativity is also the way in which you're going to choose to learn the mousetrap I need you to learn. Um, and your willingness to, to figure out how to make that work for you. Interesting. Yeah, I think um, that makes sense for me. When you, you, I think at times you've, when I heard, first heard you speaking, you would say that knowledge is not, um, it, you, that it's created, it's not consumed. Oh my gosh, Micah, I'm so excited you remembered that. I did remember that. <laughs> yeah. It always stuck with me, actually, whenever I think about what you were teaching, and it is, been my experience as well that um, you know that somebody can tell you something and you don't register it but then you experience mm -hmm. it and you're like it's the same thing but you're like the lights go on and that like you have to actually create it in your own mind versus just having somebody tell you mm -hmm. so um, how do you, like what are some things that you do in the classroom so if you've got you know, and I, I do want to go back because backpedaling, we have the regular classroom. Now we've got remote. There's no posters on the wall. Right. No, but like, talk a little bit about the setup. How do we practice? What, what's some take homes here that people can have to set up that classroom to make people happy? And then what are, what are some of the ways you stimulate that creation of knowledge? Well, in this environment, especially, um, I, we have to start with the facilitator. 
are you taking care of yourself, <laughs> right? Okay. So uh, making sure that you're eating, you're rested, you're sleeping, um, that however this new normal is manifesting in your life, that you're getting support for that and you're working through that because you're going to have to be able to bring all of you, your best self, right? And you might be able to be, um, to fake that for a day or two, you're not right. going to be able to fake it very long. You're going to get exhausted um, at a new level you've not experienced before, and your learners are going to know very quickly. Um, we all have one of these, which is a BS sniffer. Yeah. Um, and and then what happens if you're not being honest in the way in which you're interacting? You're breaking trust. Okay. If I can't trust you, I can't learn from you. That's fair. We can smell and, a hypocrite, basically. Yep. So. Yes. Point so start with. Number one is caring for yourself yeah. so that you can bring your, your whole self. Um, the number two is know your tool, right? So how can I interact with people? Um, you know, what, what tools do I have available, whether it be Zoom? I know we're all talking Zoom lately, um, but there are many tools. 8x8 has a tool um, that they, um, they've just released a pro model. There are a number of different tools out there. So really spending some time and understanding your tool and how you can use that platform. You have an and example then, of like if you chose a certain tool, mm -hmm. what, the, what is one of the benefits of, you know, like if we want to call out some of those differentiations? Sure. So engagement period, how do we do that? And what does that look like? Well, with Zoom, which is the one I'm using the most, um, I have a lot of great friends that work for eight by eight and it is good. So I want to make sure that people know that that's out there. But um, what I use in my professional life the most is zoom. Um, and the reason is that because they have thought through how to interact with folks, right? So you can do things like um, even just using the reaction, um, um, yeah. reaction tool, having people react to the way, you know, Hey, That's use a green clapping, check mark, uh, clap, yeah. thumbs up, right? Um, the ability to share screens, so share screens simultaneously for collaboration, um, putting people into breakout rooms for collaboration, and then the fact that the host or the trainer can jump around from room to room. So folks are in breakout rooms, they're collaborating with their teams, yep. um, and you can still stay connected by moving around those rooms. So. Um, in this virtual environment, um, also making sure that your what they're seeing is good, right? Um, and thinking through, you know, you know, making sure the dogs are out of the room. And I know we joke about the kids that are home right now, you know, and, and all of those things are important, but perhaps, you know, that's the hour you give them a video or something to watch in the living room. My, <laughs> so Mike, just on that, my kids just came home from the park, so I could hear them in the background. So I'm just texting <laughs> my wife to let them know we're in the live webinar. <sighs> Yeah, that, yeah. This, this is it, right? So, this is it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think the, the, the key piece right now, especially with remote learning, we're taking content we didn't expect we would need to put virtually. Um, I've done it with my team. We were all on premise. We're all virtual now. Um, and figuring out how to, do, how to translate that can be really difficult, right? But yeah. if you are taking care of yourself and you are connected to the fact that your role is to help them learn new material and that and it, when they learn this new content right you're opening doors for people that they didn't even know existed like there is a lot of honor to this position right that i think yeah. gets lost so um staying staying aligned with those two things making sure that you're interacting making sure that they have the opportunity to create the knowledge. So making sure you're using scenarios, right? And putting, putting people in breakout rooms um, to solve those scenarios, making yep. sure you're in the rooms, making sure you're coming back and debriefing uh, yep. and talking through what happened, what did you learn, how are you going to apply? Yeah, um, I think probably everybody would, if, if you've ever been to a trade show in some sort of a breakout workshop, you've done that table exercise where they give you the giant piece of paper, right? Mm -hmm. And so the Zoom breakout is, that is our, that is our breakout table white paper thing. Yes. And then you've got to take advantage of that, right? Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. And there are lots of colors in Zoom available, right? So I would also encourage facilitators to use color as opposed to the black and white, right? So you're typing everything, you're doing everything in, in the typical, you know, on the, on the white background and the typical black okay. text, making yeah. sure that I, that's one of the things I love about Zoom is that I can bring color into whatever I'm doing because lots of psycho, you know, reports out there on color psychology, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is what I talked about with the painting on the walls, right? Can you can you create a warm environment just by changing the paint? You can do right. the same thing by choosing different colors. So if I do something like this, that mm. could change how you feel about me entirely. Yes. Or, oh. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, oh, that I, says I so did, much about you. <laughs> I, it's funny, and I did choose a pink shirt today mm. just on to be on top of it. But yes. yeah. There you go. No, it's true. Color, color matters. It is. It's mm -hmm. a big. My kid love. My kids love rainbows. You know, for good. For good reason. They're, yes. they're beautiful and they're fun. Um, so those are really good tips. Uh, really helpful. Um, do you want to stop maybe for a second and do just a, yes. a poll here? I know. Uh, I think you had mentioned you wanted to get a feel for the audience and and really the mm -hmm. titles of who's attending. So um, we can just launch our next one here, which is poll number two. I'm launching that now. So if you want to just uh, quickly answer that poll and it, it'll give us a rough idea percentage wise of what kinds of folks are attending today and uh, help Sherry a little bit with how to speak to the, the audience. So we'll let that go here. We've got nine of 26 in and it's growing. So, um, and then are we, I, I know you have some things that you really want to help us understand. Are, are we hitting, are we, Kind of if there was five of them have we hit two or three out of five well let me check my notes um we're non-linear today i know we are <laughs> <laughs> that's the way my brain works every time I'm like okay you're gonna follow you're gonna do this one two three four five <laughs> it just i don't know why i keep trying <laughs> um yeah so the business case for happiness and learning we've talked um just I think we've implied it but the business case right is we need people not only to be to learn, we need them to be able to do the thing we need them to do. We need to yeah. them to do that very quickly, right? So yeah. speed to competency is a thing. Business case for happiness and learning is when you use these magical, um, this magical combination of neurotransmitters, um, and as you can see, it doesn't even cost any extra money. Um, people are learning more quickly and mm -hmm. able to apply that knowledge and to consider that knowledge in their processes much faster. Okay. Oh, we have a bunch, 61% managers. Yeah, so we have, we're not necessarily all trainers here today. There are, yeah. although there is uh, 40, you know, close to 40% of people that are in that realm, but there is a large per percentage here that are just in a, in a manager role looking for, you know, training information. So that should help you a little bit, I guess, in, uh, in setting the, the stage here for them. So. Yeah. So um, the business case is it will save you money, right? I mean, it will just save money on so many, on so many. Yeah. Levels. And if we tip those off, like attrition, training, attrition, attrition and rehiring yeah. and recruiting, and then what? Um, ability to, to perform quickly, right? Cool. So um, I don't, any organization that I've worked for, especially in customer service, um, there isn't a long road, a, a runway, right? We don't train you on a process and say, okay, well, you know, play around with that for about six weeks and we'll come back and see how that worked for you. We need people to execute quickly. Um, and in order to do that, I need to make, we need to ensure that they are in an environment that fosters learning and not only learning, but their ability and willingness to apply that learning quickly when they get on the floor. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, the, and we talk, um, the second takeaway is happiness, happiness is not a fake it until you make it proposition, right? So you have to care for yourself, There's but some. also thinking about how you care for your learners, right? So mm -hmm. are you making sure that there are breaks built in? Um, perhaps one of the things I love to do is um, have people stretch, right? Let's get up, let's stretch, let's shake it out. Um, it's, it can sound juvenile, but I tell you, I've not, 
uh, I've not experienced, very rarely have I experienced an adult that's like, oh, please, you know, and even those guys will eventually get in there and, and stretch a bit. And you can do that still in a Zoom classroom. Sure. Um, yeah. So making sure that you're caring for, for their health as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to, I, you, you and I both know that this is to sit in front of these things for eight hours a day without the little trips to the coffee shop with friends and that it's just, it's not, it, it's worse. You know what I mean? Than mm -hmm. even a cubicle yeah. life job. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's an interesting new world that I'm, we're all trying to figure out like how to make space for those. I know I've been posting these funny, silly videos for my team in our Slack channel um, that I'm not any good at it. I'm not a videographer, but just silly things um, that have been bringing us closer together. I filmed my garden this morning, you know. Um, normally, I wouldn't talk about my garden with, with folks, but sure. right now, it's, it, brings them, it brings us closer. Yeah, yeah. So. I thought it was interesting. Jimmy Fallon, um, when he's doing his show, he started out just in his living room, and then very quickly, he transitioned to walking around the block with his wife, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of doing some, trying to, like, you know, bring people into his world a little bit beyond just sitting and something like that. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Too. And you can get zoom on your phone. Yeah. So that's a, that's a great, uh, thank you for bringing that up because I have a dear friend. I think you know him, Jeremy Watkin, um, yeah. one of my dearest friends on the planet. And hey, when Jeremy. I, yeah, he, he is in California now and I'm still in Oregon. Well, yeah. I miss him and we used to do walks. And so yeah. we were like, we can still do that. We have this thing. So yeah. we, we call each other. Uh, I think we use FaceTime. I'm not sure what we use. Um, but And plug in. And we take a walk around our respective neighborhoods. And it's, it's almost as good as him being here. Yeah. Um, so something you just piqued my interest. I, we could do that in class as well. Sure. Yeah, yeah that is absolutely. something. That would be another gift of this new world that we live in, um, is getting yeah. people outside. Breakout walks. Breakout walks. Look at that. We just created something, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> um, so then, uh, and then just before, uh, I think you wanted to sort of open it up and have people even ask some questions. Perhaps, yes, please. Uh, in the open chat. So if anybody has a burning question that, and you'd like to probe Sherry's mind, uh, the chat's open. Everybody can see it. So just go ahead and ask your question. And then also if people have answers to questions people are asking, feel free to input there as well. We want that collaboration. So we can start doing that. I did want to just give you an opportunity to sort of fully exhaust, because uh, I, I know you have a lot of these ideas, whether it's in class or remote, they probably both work given that we have these breakout rooms and stuff, mm -hmm. but um, how do we facilitate relevant activities that engage positive emotions through the learning experience? So for you, what have been things that have been very successful in waking people up to make the training engaging? So, and, and I know that you have a lot to share on that. Yes. So um, I just would like to encourage to begin with, let's start with the short list of don'ts, which is for, we, we okay. talked about this a second ago, but I just think it's important to say again, don't bore them with an agenda, with a whole list of classroom rules, okay. or even learning objectives. We, we, get, we get told somewhere, I think I even heard it in grad school, they must know the learning objectives. Actually, not really. That's a business case. What they want to know is what's in it for me. How's this going to make my life better? Um, and then, you know, it always cracks me up where they spend 15 minutes telling you where the bathrooms are and the emergency exits. If this information is important, use your wall space and put it up there, sure. right? And adults can yeah. figure out how to use that information. I was just thinking about like if you were having a guest <laughs> over for dinner and you just felt like <laughs> They come in the door and they're just yeah. like, just want to let you know, the bathroom's down, two doors to the These left. are the rules for interaction yeah. in my home. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so things that are very successful, like I uh, said earlier, scenario-based learning, right? Present them with challenging problems to solve. Um, I don't believe competition is... is um, is useful in a classroom setting. You're going back to that lizard brain, right? It's all about I want to beat everyone, not about what I want to learn and bring to the team. So bring people yeah. together to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really important to add movement as much as you can. Um, if you think about, um, you know, those jogs that you can't stand, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you, it would be, it would be interesting um, if you 
could read or or listen to something you're trying to learn, Micah, while you're jogging, and then yeah. take note of of how much more um, you retain, and also how much um, not only retain but your willingness to consider that new information. Both okay. of those things will be increased with movement. So, and we solved that right. Walk walking in your breakout rooms. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting because I, I listen to audio books and I'll, I'll confess that I've been watching Netflix movies while I'm running, which I don't know if that <laughs> sounds good or bad, but uh, so information retention versus entertainment. But when I'm doing audio books and I'm running, it really, I don't want to focus on the pain of the running so mm -hmm. that, that I, I am more awake to the information. It's, I can focus on it <clears throat> basically because I, I want that distraction. So having you say that is actually really interesting to me that yeah. I, if I listen to an audio book while there's a lot of chaos going on at home, I have to keep rewinding. Mm -hmm. I just have to keep going back 15, 30 seconds. Whereas if I'm running, I'm just fully into it. So that is yes. cool. So if, if anyone is listening is interested in research about that, a really quick read, um, if you Google the Read and Ride program, um, read, and ride. read and Ride, they actually um, measured comprehension, reading comprehension with elementary school students that were riding stationary bikes. Wow. All of their numbers increased just by adding movement. That's crazy. And I have seen those little pedals under desks sometimes at school. Mm -hmm. How do you do that in the training classroom for a call center, like a contact center? Like what, what does that look like for movement? Um, and especially in the situation that we're in right now, we did talk mm -hmm. about breakout. Maybe you can go for a walk, you know, and have people talk through something. But are there other ideas, you know, like, is it just jumping jacks or like, what is it? So in the classroom, it can be as simple as um, there's an activity called the gallery walk. Um, I believe Bob Pike took first um, um, saying, I believe he's created it, but then there are others that say they who did so. But you can find it by Googling Bob Pike and gallery walk. And so the, the simple uh, explanation of it is you put those big post-it notes around the room mm -hmm. and then you have people draw um, the most important key learning point of the day or the module and then they walk around the room and they comment on others or ask questions okay. so movement doesn't have to be you know a 5k right or yeah. even a, a really long walk around the community but it, it can just be simply getting up and moving around the room um, and it, and it can be stretch breaks um, so oftentimes weather permitting of course I'm an Oregonian so uh, I know we will not melt in the rain, um, but you have, you know, not everyone likes to get wet, but <laughs> so uh, if weather's permitting, I do ask people to go and take walks in their, in their team, with their team to consider new problems, to work through um, whatever challenge that they are presented with. So okay. you can get very creative, but movement is really important. So maybe just um, even asking people to start figuring out if they can put paper on their walls or mm -hmm. while they're at home like or whatever you know what i mean something mm -hmm. that allows them to stand up or yep. that type of thing yeah. um we do have a question that came in from wendy herman um i can read that when when you're onboarding a new employee and used to have them sit side by side with someone to train them on supported application how and where do you start to convert this process to online only oh so side by sides is what i'm hearing is that correct wendy so where somebody is listening, so if we're talking about contact centers, it would be somebody listening to a tenured agent on the phone. Like a YJAC situation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we are doing that. Um, and the way in which we're doing that is Zoom allows for that to happen. So we have an individual uh, join a Zoom room that is on um, that is accepting calls. And we have uh, agents. Um, new hire agents um, observing and then we have a G chat on the side because we don't want to disturb the person that's taking calls so we okay. have a G chat set up and the trainers are in the G chat um, f fielding those questions okay so and it walk me through remarkable. that again I'm, I'm a little I'm a little slow so the <laughs> no you're, you're not it's you're, in the tr you're in the training class right yep and so in this environment everybody's, everybody's remote mm-hmm and yep. you're using Zoom as your core. Yes. And they can hear the call somehow? Yes. 
Yes. How are they, that's just because the host is hooked into the audio. How does that work? There are some there. It's in the audio settings. Okay. Um, and boy, oh boy, I had my team set that up. Boy, it shows can, right now that I did not figure that out. But I know that it works. Yes, that, I, yeah. I can get you the details and I can post those for you. Um, okay. And as is, it we're done here. is it real time or is it like a pass? Real call? time. No, no, no. Real they're time. they're oh, in wow. the queue, in Zoom, in the queue. Um, and we're watching because it's important not only to hear, but to see the systems that they're in. So there's a screen the, share. Their, their screen, screen share. Okay. You hear them. You hear the customer. You mm -hmm. get to see their screen. And then you're over here in Gchat asking your questions, making your comments, which is facilitated by trainers. And why not the Zoom chat? Why, why Gchat? Um, because we don't want to disturb uh, the person that's in the queue. We don't want any mm. distractions there. Distractions, gotcha. Especially right now. Um, I okay. don't know if you guys have called any support channels right now, but they're busy. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah. So that's actually really helpful. And we'll get those steps from you and post yes, them with mm -hmm. our question and answer blog piece later. And so um, Christina um, and and Wendy will will have uh, some steps for that. So. And Wendy, if you want to let us know if we're if we're kind of hitting close to home on that, um, there's another question that's come in there. Uh, do you? This is from Jennifer uh, Tremere. Tremere, if I'm saying that correctly. Do you have any re recos on what, how to bring in gamification to remote training, remote learning? Mm -hmm. Also, will this presentation be made available on demand for viewing? I'll answer that one absolutely. Uh, everybody's emails tracked for the sign up, and we will send out emails with the uh, link to the recorded session and any other materials, uh, links, or resources that are ch chatted about here. So, but yeah, go ahead and answer that. So, my favorite expert on uh, gamification is Thiagi. That's T H I A G I. He's been an expert for decades. Um, he's also just a fantastic human. I always love to support fantastic humans. Do you want to just take a second and write that in the chat? Because I know when I tried to Google him, I was like, wait, what? How do you spell this? Because I went to his website and it is really interesting. It is like he's like dedicated his. Just like you with training, mm -hmm. you know, and customer experience, he's dedicated his whole being to gamification, which is really yes. interesting. So, yeah. yeah, and I asked him, uh, I had the pleasure of hosting him at a conference for a couple of days, and I asked him, when are you going to retire? This was like 10 years ago, and he said, oh, no, 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 none of that. I'll be dying on stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's passionate. Yeah. So um, I would encourage you to um, look at his website. He's also posting things relevant to um, remote training right now um, on LinkedIn. And he has what's called here. I'll put this in the chat as well. Lola's. Um, so these are activities that he um, very quick. They, they can be used as openers or closers. I uh, even has some that you can implement, you know, anywhere you want in the training. They're usually about five to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but he is, he's done a whole of the hard work of taking his on premise um, modules and making them effective for a remote classroom. Awesome. However, I would suggest that anything he's done um, could be used in a remote environment. I mean, he what he, what he does for gamification is he creates what's called a frame game. So he creates the structure and thinks through all of the processes that are, you know, in the gamificate for gamification to occur. And yep. then you just plug in your content. So it's plug and play. And you can purchase his books, but he he has like, I think last count 800 free games on his website. Awesome. Yeah. Um, is that, uh, Jennifer, does that help uh, answer your question? Is, uh, I, I think it's a fairly robust resource. It'll take a little bit of research there, but um, hopefully that um, that's a good source for you on some ideas there. And mm -hmm. we have talked, uh, uh, yeah, Jacob, we, we, the, the dot com for the, the, uh, is just the up a little bit in the chat there from there Sherry, you if you want it, it's right by the word Lola. Um, okay, perfect. So Jennifer says that's helpful. And, uh, and back to Wendy, she'd mentioned she's got a different set of technology. So she's got log me in and Microsoft Teams and stuff. So she's, there's some, mm -hmm. some logistical things to figure out there. Yeah, but and, I, I, think, and I noticed she said Skype as well. And I am certain that they have got inform they have information or they should, if they're on point in their blogs on their sites. Um, that's yeah. one of the other gifts of this um, new world that we're in is everyone's really pulling together, especially in learning and development, which is my, my space to give things away, to just say this, this is how we how this is what's working for us. Try this. Yeah. Um, 
So I would even consider reaching out to any of those folks and asking. Yeah, and I would mention as well, uh, just for Wendy, that on the technology side, we have some friends at vendor sort of partner levels, like there's companies like InContact and others that are cloud-based telephony solutions. And they the cloud solutions have built into them wijacking capabilities for remote. That's I mean, that's their whole thing that they do, right? And so mm -hmm. I, I've been having some in-depth technical conversations with them. We're fairly straightforward. Like if you can do it remotely, then you should be able to share your screen and audio with the rest of the class. So um, they're looking at your vendor and hopefully they have cloud capabilities if you're doing remote stuff and uh, and then yeah. kind of reaching out to them and saying, how do I get this set up for us? And hopefully they're a good resource. Um, so let me spell that again for you. I, it looks like somebody can't see it. It's T H I A G I dot com. But trust me, if you just put his name in the browser, he's all that comes up. Oh, um, you might need to, when you're typing things, Sherry, there's oh, an I option said panelists. There. If you say panelists and yeah. attendees as your there option, we go. that will there uh, we go. allow everyone I'm to see it. I'm not paying it. attention. That's a, that's, a, that's a pretty tricky one. So there we go. Um, we've got about nine minutes left. So I, if you guys, I, these are great questions and Sherry's got answers. So I would just keep hammering her um, if you guys can, uh, if you have more questions. So we'll wait for some more to come in there. Um, the, I know that you've got some resources aside from the gamification mm -hmm. one that, um, that are near and dear to you. Do you want to just list those off quickly and what each one perhaps means to you? Yes. And will we, will we be posting those for folks yep. to have access to? Yep. Perfect. Before Amanda's I actually going to punch, punch them into the chat and send them out extra Wonderful. afterwards for our wrap up. So. So one quick thing I want to say about a, a measuring emotion as well is not only does it help you in that moment and to facilitate, it mm -hmm. also helps your designers identify content that might be causing frustration, boredom, in um, people not engaging with the content. So, so when you say measure, you mean mm -hmm. like like the polls we're doing type Correct. thing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, so um, yes, I. I Micah asked a great question uh, when we were preparing and was what if it's a small center what if they don't have a training team and and then maybe no budget at all so the great thing about our our the last 10 or 15 years is a lot of information is available on the internet when I started in my role everything was locked behind doors and in yeah. file cabinets and nobody would share anything so um, if you if you do have a small team you don't have a budget you have some homegrown trainers they're good at their job but they don't know how to facilitate there are a number of things you can use um, modern workplace learning is the work of Jane Hart um, I can't say enough about Jane. Um, she, all of her work is focused on how to create learning inside of the work. So her idea, and it's absolutely correct, is we learn best when we're engaged in the work we're asked to do, mm -hmm. right? And yep. so she has spent like the last 12 years um, figuring out how to make that happen and gives a lot of stuff away for free. That website will be in the resources. Okay. Um, yeah, it's up in the chat there now. Mm -hmm. As you uh, announced them, Amanda just posting them. Oh, there. thank you. Uh, training Magazine, uh, they have so many free online webinars. Um, mo um, and they do a really good job of making sure their presenters are giving you content that you can use and it's not a sales pitch. Um, we're all familiar with those. Come to our webinar, or read my blog, and then, you know, you have to give away all of your information and, and things like that. These, these are just industry professionals that want to make sure we're all doing great work and they offer, um, gosh, I think they're have, having webinars like every week, couple of weeks. Sure. Okay. Yeah. On every topic you can imagine. Awesome. Um, there's Association for Talent Development. Now this is used to be ASTD. It's ATD. This one does cost money to join and I, I usually okay. try to give free things, but just in case you have a little bit in your budget, <laughs> mm -hmm. this would be a great place to, to spend that money. Um, and what join, would they get out of that by joining that one? So you get access to um, all of their research, you get access to their blog posts, um, they have different free online webinars that you can attend or watch the recordings. Um, I think you get one or two free books a year. Um, 
and um, also the ability, uh, they have these communities of practice. So okay. you can join a couple of communities of practice and really learn from folks that are engaged in the same, whatever realm that is, whether it's design or social learning or any of those things. Yeah. Um, Scenario-based learning, uh, Kathy Moore, she is okay. the person. Uh, her book, Map It, um, is absolutely incredible. You'll also find it on that website. She shows you how to create and write dynamic scenarios. Awesome. Um, absolutely great stuff there. And then um, if you don't evaluate, <laughs> uh, you're, you're missing a great opportunity um, to, to determine if something is working well and, um, and the, your individual's ability to apply that information, which is the key, right? Should, can they yeah. apply? Yep. Uh, Will Talheimer is the guy. Um, okay. I know you're used to hearing Kirkpatrick. I would encourage you to um, take a bold move and look at Dr. Talmeyer's work. It's based on 20 years of research um, and he has both performance focused smiley sheets. So you may be used to those smiley sheets that say, hey, was the room warm? Were the cookies good? Does Sherry smile? None of that information tells me if you can perform. He right. shows you how to write a, a better smiley sheet and also then how to evaluate your whole program. Awesome. That's a great, that sounds like a really good resource. Um, there was one more question that came in um, from Jennifer. She said, is there an optimal size for a remote new hire class? Yes, there's always an optimal size for a class. <laughs> so budgets, uh, I know I've held classes of 40, uh, much to my chagrin. Um, 12 um, wow. is, is optimal. 20, uh, I would not move past 20. Um, okay. I know sometimes we have to, but just know that the experience will not be what you want it to be and just understand that. Okay, perfect. Uh, hopefully, Jennifer, that, that helps to answer your question very directly. Um, Jacob Gress has a question. Any recommendations on places to get certifications for coaching that are respected uh, as a transferable skill, I, I suppose. Yes. So ATD um, also offers certification for coaching. And then okay. there's the International Coaching Federation. I think it's ICF um, that is also um, well respected globally. Okay. So ICF and ATD. Yep. Not the home security company. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one. Um, Great. Um, so we're, we're just coming up on the hour here and uh, certainly appreciate that everybody has meetings. They're going to have to be jumping to. Yes. Um, I, I want to, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I want to say thank you, Sherry, so much mm -hmm. for joining us. It's really a privilege and an honor to have you with us as a, you know, as a, as a wealth of resource, but also just as a friend and it's always fun to get in the chat. So, um, and uh, I'm sure everybody on the lesson, you know, the lessons here today got something out of it. So, um, I, I really appreciate everybody attending and, uh, and coming to learn with us and with Sherry. So uh, I hope everybody has a great day. Just as we're leaving, we have one final poll if you want to answer it. And that is the, are you wearing pajamas right now? <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with whimsy, right? Like we No, can, we, it's, abs it, it's exactly what we for, need. <laughs> so the, uh, well, we got 15 of 24. I know people are starting to leave. So I'll give it just, uh, you know, 10 more seconds and everyone's being hand on the heart honest. All right, I'm going to cut it off in five, four, three, two, one. And here are your results. Oh, nobody's, yes. Nobody's in pajamas. Nobody's wearing pajamas. On, on <laughs> webinar day, everybody dresses yeah. up and puts makeup on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great way to end though, right? Because it's memorable. So yes. remember that when you're ending your sessions. What can you do to become, to be memorable? And sometimes it's just being a little fun. Yeah. Magic tricks, jokes. Nothing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Sherry. Everybody Thanks. have a great day and we'll see you bye. next time. Take care. Bye-bye.